Hi, I'm Greg Barton. And I'm Nick Arpea. Welcome to the University of California at Berkeley. My lab is in the Department of Molecular and Cell Biology, and we're studying the innate immune system and its interactions with microbial pathogens. Today we'll show you around our lab and tell you some of our latest findings that are published in this issue of Cell. These studies led to the surprising finding that Salmonella has evolved to require signals from the innate immune system for full virulence. So let's go inside where all the action happens and look at some data. In general, our group is interested in how the immune system recognizes infection as well as how pathogens evade recognition or the consequences of recognition. In our study, we focused on a family of innate receptors called the toll-like receptors or TLRs. These transmembrane proteins recognize a variety of conserved microbial features and induce responses that work to limit pathogen growth. So a really important question is how have pathogens evolved in response to the selective pressure applied by TLRs? Because several TLRs can recognize salmonella, we intercrossed individual TLR knockouts to generate mice lacking multiple TLRs. This approach is one of the unique aspects of our study. Researchers have traditionally used mice lacking common TLR signaling adapters MITE88 and TRIF, shown here in purple and pink. But this comes with the complication that MITE88 is also required for signaling by several cytokine receptors. Infection of these mice with salmonella led to a very surprising finding. While mice that lacked two TLRs, TLRs 2 and 4, were extremely susceptible to salmonella infection, ones lacking additional TLRs were more resistant. Survival within macrophages is required for systemic infection, so we examined salmonella growth in this cell type in vitro. The results agreed with our in vivo data. Cells lacking TLRs 2 and 4 supported growth of salmonella, whereas any further reduction in TLR signaling prevented the bacteria from replicating. So when we visualized bacteria by transmission electron microscopy, we discovered that salmonella wasn't able to generate a replicative compartment called the salmonella-containing vacuole in TLR deficient cells. To create this replicative compartment, salmonella uses a set of genes encoded within Salmonella pathogenesis island 2, or SPI2. These genes encode a type 3 secretion system, which injects effector proteins from the bacterium into the host cell cytosol and transforms the normally degradative phagosome into the more hospitable salmonella-containing vacuole. So all this led to one last important question. If something downstream of TLRs is required by salmonella for induction of SPI2 genes, then what is that TLR-dependent signal? TLRs lead to many changes in cells. Despite all these downstream effects, only when we blocked phagosome acidification were SPI2 genes no longer induced. So this suggested that the bacteria use phagosome acidification to regulate SPI2 gene induction. So all that was left to do was to lock Nick in the microscope room and have him test whether TLR signaling does in fact influence the pH of phagosomes. So let's let Nick out and um, have him tell us what he found. Hey Nick. Hi. So to test whether TLR signaling really does influence acidification of salmonella containing phagosomes, Greg had me use ratiometric imaging of fluorescein-labeled bacteria to measure the pH of salmonella-containing vacuoles in macrophages with or without TLR function. I observed that TLR signaling resulted in rapid acidification of the phagosome. In cells without TLR signaling, phagosome acidification was slow. This suggested to us that salmonella requires TLR-induced rapid phagosomal acidification to turn on SPI2 genes in a timely manner and to avoid being destroyed in the normal phagocytic pathway. So why did you evolve to require TLR-dependent acidification for your variants? Well, I'm just a prokaryote, but one idea is that this signal represents the most reliable contextual cue for me to know that I've entered into a macrophage. Good answer, Sal. We hope you enjoyed hearing about our work. Thanks for watching.